Those of you who are not familiar with Hamburg Aviation, we are the regional cluster network organization of the aerospace industry here, and we are also the initiators and the project office um, of the Crystal Cabin Awards. So, um, and before we start with our keynote panel tonight, allow me a quick personal note um, real fast. Um, I'd like to express, uh, first off, a sincere thanks to my outstanding team who has been organizing everything and everyone here in this room. Uh, today, tonight, and uh, I think this is the greatest Crystal Cabin Award ceremony we've ever had. So thank you, everyone, for the hard work you put in this. But, but for now, let's focus on discussing passenger experience. And uh, we see a lot of PaxX industry these days uh, on the show floor at AIX and also at the Crystal Cabin Awards, and we thought Let's also, instead of a keynote presentation, let's hear the voice of the customer too. The customer, which is the end customer, the passenger, and also the customer, which is the airlines. Um, and we are very honored tonight to have three very high-ranking panelists on stage here. Um, and I'd like to start with uh, our passenger, um, who has been a frequent flyer since her teenage days in all booking classes and in all airlines. Uh, she was born in Hamburg and she is today one of the most renowned fashion models as well as actress. Um, typically, she spends one night per week flying in an aircraft and not in a bed. And uh, she's also here today because since last year, she is also the co-founder of uh, Hamburg-based cabin lighting startup Jetlight. Um, so here's actually a passenger who has taken passenger experience into her own hands. Please welcome with me on stage, Tony Gahn. Hello. Good to see you. For our second panelist, our second panelist has pretty much two hats on. Uh, he's, for one, the president of the Airline Passenger Experience Association, APEX. And on the other hand, he's the executive vice president commercial for Virgin Atlantic um, after uh, serving as COO for Finnair for many years. So um, here's a lot of expertise combined in one person. Please welcome on stage with me, uh, Juha Yevnen. Good to see you, Juha. Glad to have you here. We also have a third panelist uh, who, uh, as I realize, also has two hats on tonight. Um, he is one, an airline representative, but he's also a Crystal Cabin Award finalist tonight. And I decided if I wanted to give a deeper introduction uh, on this person to this audience, I can only screw up terribly, so I'll make it real quick. Please welcome with me on stage uh, the president and CEO of Emirates, uh, Timothy Clark. Okay, so um, Tony, I'll start with you. As I mentioned, you spent around one night per week in an aircraft flying. Um, what to you makes a good flight? Um, what are the amenities you look out for and um, what annoys you most? A flatbed. <laughs> I love flatbeds, I'm very tall. So as soon as the bed is not really, really flat or my feet hit the end, I cannot sleep. If it's flat, it doesn't matter how narrow it is, or what the service is, or what food they serve me, or anything. Turbulence, I can sleep through. I need a flat bed. Um, but of course, the well-being around the plane is important. So if it smells terribly, or if it's freezing, or if the lighting is way too bright, I can't sleep either. Um, so yeah, I think I'm quite a picky flyer, since it is my home, sort of. OK, so the flat thing fat bed thing was kind of surprising for me now. Um, Sir Tim, you have been with the industry for so many years, and you have been with Emirates for so many years, which is one of the leading, if not the leading, international long-haul airline. From your experience, what were like surprising things about passenger experience you learned in your career, and how does it translate to products and developments we see at Emirates? Well, I guess I wasn't uh, particularly surprised about the aspirations of passengers because we're, we all do it. And as much comfort you, as you can give people, given the time they're on board aircraft, 
and, uh, and the facilities that you need to provide as, as a basic. In the early days, they were, they were missing in many, many uh, aspects of cabin design, whether it be in the, the actual airframe uh, design or in the, uh, the seat design, etc. So it, it wasn't really difficult to understand as long as you kept your feet on planet Earth so that you were no different to anybody else. And what you aspired to and what you enjoyed was going to be the same as everybody else. So I generally had a, uh, a feeling that things need to, could be done a lot better in many, many ways. Um, and uh, kind of drove that in certain areas to try and get what we wanted. It was pretty self-serving in terms of what the product aspirations were and designed for Emirates in the early years, bearing in mind that we were planning uh, very early on these ultra-long-range operations for 17-hour flights, 16-hour flights. So we knew we had to change out the product and the design of that. So that really drove us to really get on with the job as quickly as we could and embrace the uh, supply chain, design supply chain, everybody in those years, that was 25 years ago. It was a lot smaller than it is today. And it was quite difficult to take people with us, but we are where we are now, it's fantastic. Okay. You, you come both from the airline background and the organizational background. Um, wh what have you learned about passenger experience so far? And if you are touring a show like the Aircraft and Tourist Expo, or if you look at the Crystal Cabin Awards, what field do you uh, take most interest in and what do you look out for most? I think the key challenge for all the airlines is to really to customize because we have different needs. We have customers who want to enter the aircraft, go to sleep straight away because you need to be rested. Then we have other customers who actually really want to experience the experience. They don't do business class or other service classes too often. How do we customize the service so that it suits everybody's needs? Um, so that has been a very important part of, of my previous life, of course, at Finnair and at the Apex Association, but especially at Virgin Atlantic as well, that we have a very um, sort of joint, we want to create a joint feeling in upper class cabin, but at the same time, we need to respect those who want to sleep and rest. So it's, it's, it, it is all about customization and make it, make it suited for every single customer segment. Okay. Tony, you have been flying extensively for many years. Do you notice there is customization going on with the airline products? Do you notice that cabins are evolving? Yes, for sure. I'm always surprised because I fly different airlines weekly, maybe sometimes daily. I don't, I'm the kind of traveler that gets to fly every Monday at 8 from A to B. I have crazy routes. I go to Africa a lot. I shoot in the craziest places with only tiny economy seats sometimes. I don't get to choose much, really. I just land in that airline and aircraft, and if I'm lucky, I get a business class bed. Um, sometimes it's not possible. So I think I'm, I'm a pretty authentic traveler to everything. I'm, I'm stuck in a tiny seat sometimes. and um, So of course I notice a difference. Sometimes all of a sudden, oh, this one has a, it's longer now, or whoa, you have, I mean, I usually notice the food in the movies the most. I'm like, oh, this changed. Um, but yeah, the reason why I'm part of Jetlight is we have never really noticed the difference in lighting before. And now I realize, wow, the light's actually brutal. It can bother you like this in the morning, and it can be really nice to fall asleep to something more cozy. So some small details like lighting, or even a nicer smell, or something nice music, or really, I don't know, sometimes there's a chef who will explain to me how he made the meal, or things like that really do wake you up when you travel daily. Is, uh, is this focusing on the small details enough, or do you need the bigger picture? I mean, Satim, you have been following the interior segment for many, many years, and I think you have been really pushy on Airbus back in the days to install a shower on the A380. Mm -hmm. So um, when you look at interiors, is this industry to you, is this innovative enough, or do you still think you should do a lot more? In this well, device? compared to what it was, we were in the dinosaur age then, and trying to get things done was almost impossible. So, the, the, uh, the, the, if you look, roll the clock forward to the 2019 on going forward to 2020, we are, we are in a different world. We have assembled here tonight some really smart minds producing fantastic products, the likes of which we would have only dreamt of 25 years ago. Um, so we now have uh, people who embrace innovation, recognize as, well, the things I said about the aspirations of passengers. These are drif driven not so much by what goes on on airlines themselves, but when you look at the environment from which people, we all come, whether it be our homes, our cars, our consumer electronics, fashion, whatever, that has changed at a pace. And for the airline industry to have stayed where it was and not move, 
uh, would, would have been in a possible sort of situation. So now we have a situation where everybody is really working hard. And we heard about some of the university ideas that we knew, some of the best brains there, being brought to the aerospace sector in the interiors. Because remember, aerospace was always driven by the engineers who got the aerodynamics right, the engines right, etc. And the cabins right. were kind of way last on the priorities. And that's all changed now. And I think that's because uh, people like us, I mean, I don't mean Emirates, I mean, everybody in this room has basically got the whole of the aerospace industry to recognize that actually the passenger probably are more important in the environment that they fly in and what you do in, times to, in, in trying to meet their expectations. Um, and the tools that we now have, you would be foolish not to embrace them. So the more innovation that comes along, the more, and I, you, you mentioned detail, it's very important that you keep a, your eye on the detail all of the time. It's pointless trying to think, well, it's all going to happen. You have to have a holistic approach to what the cabin is going to look like. In, that involves the architecture, the window reveals, the carpets, the, the seats, the furniture around the seats, and, and the lighting, of course. And bringing back and introducing, and it is fairly new, the wellness wellness side of things, which isn't, it isn't all about lighting, it's about cabin altitude, airflow, circulation, etc. So, as I said, we've got that now. I'm not saying we, shouldn't, we, we should stop innovating and become complacent, but it's, it's fantastic. When I look back in the early years of this particular award, and when the Crystal Cabin Award starts then to where we are now, it's a different world, fabulous. It's really, really, it's good fun, it's really interesting. Oh, thank you. Um, you are, you are um, in your role at Apex also discussing passenger experience at the forefront between industry and, uh, and airlines. What would you say were like milestones in recent year that really brought passenger experience or the airline product along? I would say in general, of course, the, the Middle East Gulf carriers have really pushed up the bar overall. I think we across the world have, have been looking in the mirror ourselves to how can we make sure that we are relevant in a competition. Um, with, with the Gulf carriers, and they really raised the bar, and, and of course, a number of other carriers around the world. Uh, and that's why, of course, we at the Apex, we have felt that we have a, clearly a role to play to make sure that we get the industry together, the certain topics that we can drive as an industry, regardless if we're competitors or not, from end-to-end -end customer experience, not only in flight, but actually all the way from, from the airport experience, all the way when the flight finishes. Because for a customer, that's the journey. We can't only keep on staring our own little part of the puzzle. It's actually the whole journey, and it is our responsibility as an airline and as an airline association to try to drive the best for the customer experience holistically. And that really has been the focus for Apex. Yeah. Um, talking about the customer experience, Tony, you joined Jetlight last year as a co-founder, and um, which is two years ago, even. Sorry. Um, so um, speaking from an outsider perspective, that's a really interesting. Uh, uh, um, choice and and um, thing to do um, for somebody like you in your position to invest in a startup which uh, is focusing on mitigating the effects of jet, la jet lag through cabin lighting. What drove you into making this decision and also what, what do you think are issues you can help address that maybe are being overlooked or not being addressed enough by the industry today? Um, I mean, I, I simply found out or heard that there's a way to reduce jet lag in a natural way. And I was like, what? I don't need to drink a bottle of wine to go to sleep and have a whole <laughs> bunch of coffees like three hours after I fall asleep to wake up. If there's any way to naturally travel healthier, that's what I jumped on. I didn't know that was possible. If there was a more healthy thing, like I don't like taking melatonin pills. My legs are weird the next day. I don't like taking sleeping pills. This is a natural way to reduce jet lag. So that's the simple answer. I'm jet lagged almost every week. And when I was 16 and I flew to New York every weekend, I didn't notice jet lag, now I do. Um, so if there's any healthier way to, to travel, my, my schedule won't change. I'll always be German living in America, <clears throat> going to Africa a lot. So I'll always be in a plane every week. Um, and if there's ways to naturally do this, so this works through melatonin in your body that naturally gets risen and then lowered um, through the lighting, I would love for that to be in every plane so that I, I can be healthier. We all try to be healthier. Um, I'm partially vegan, and then we all work out. We all try to be healthy with our skin, our hair. Why not our bodies? Jet lag is a problem for everyone in this room, I assume. You said healthier a couple times, and this is also um, something we notice at the Crystal Cabin Awards for submissions and also for the finalists. We see a lot of entries um, where you uh, where uh, entrants focus on well-being 
on board, whether it's also uh, cleaner air or uh, soundproof materials um, to help get the noise down. And it's often combined with an extra in, in, in privacy. Um, so, and I think uh, the Emirates first class suites are a fantastic example for that. We also have, you know, a, a, almost a room to yourself. Um, it's actually so the only cabin where I don't sleep. When I sit in there, I'm like, okay, I'll do everything. <laughs> I'll watch every movie. I'll ask her to come 10 times just to talk to the because she's so pretty. <laughs> And you can go to the bar and have your glass, your bottle of wine before you go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> How do we compete with that now? <laughs> Try Airbus 350, launching next week. <laughs> so, so where would you say, also the the two gentlemen over here, where would you say with the does the trend go? Is it more like interacting in the cabin, or is it really that having? a place to retreat, having a, a place for yourself where you can feel better physically. Um, where is the new premium really coming from these days? I would say maybe from an airline who doesn't have first class. I think, it's, first of all, I think the service classes have been started to blur between first class and business class, and therefore many airlines have decided to only have business class. And of course, there's been a lot of investment in the case of Virgin as well in, in the quality of the seat. Uh, and we're looking forward to launching our new Airbus 350 seat and the cabin next week, actually, uh, which really focuses on well-being besides very high quality seat, but also the whole ambience in the cabin with the fresh air system that Airbus 350 has, plus the lighting, which has always been a signature at Virgin Atlantic. Uh, well-being is a key priority for the food as well. I mean, we really need to make sure that it's high, high quality ingredients. Um, so I think well-being in general is very much on top of everybody's agenda because we all need to respect our sleep. We need to sleep. We need to take care of ourselves. So it is very much high on the agenda for us as well. Yeah, I, think, I think that's absolutely right. Um, it, it's clear as people have become more environmentally aware, more aware of well-being and how, um, in the case of flying, ultra-long haul flights, very dry conditions, you're in the aircraft for, for that period of time. So all the work that's been going on, as I said, with cabin altitude, f airflow, quality of air, etc., is, is absolutely vital. Um, a kind of interactive cabin? No, I don't think so. Um, I can't imagine all of us getting onto a business class cabin and say, yee-haw, let's have a party, you know. What people <laughs> want to do is, is, and we all know this, is that if you've been working all day and you, you want a bit of privacy, you, you've got a long flight, you want a bit of me time, you want to be able to work, look at the TVs, eat, and not engage with people unless you really have to. Sorry, but that's the nature of the beast. That's what we are. Uh, and you really don't want to have to start talking to people because you have eye contact with them and because the, the design of the cabin is such that you're thrown into people's faces. That's not cool. Um, so you tick all the boxes. So somehow, and I've always said that the element of privacy, whatever we may think about the sort of gregarious nature of the, of, of, of the human being, the fact of the matter is we all like our little cave and our territory. So you've got to try and create that at the same time as not make the cabin become a cave. So the, the notion that you would have, as we did in the early days, create the first class suites with the doors um, and then develop those. And then, of course, latterly, the full first class enclosed cabin was an understanding that there are people, many people who can afford it. Of course, this isn't going to come cheap, who really want the privacy. Mm -hmm. as well as all the other things we've talked about. So the trick was to, to balance that out. Equally, um, in, in the business class cabins, in the premium economy cabins, people pursue privacy in as many ways as they can uh, and, and give people the space because this territoriality of the, of the human with regard to his space, her space, in the lockers above, etc. You see the battles of the, the wheelie bags and the, this kind of thing. It's, it's, it's a psychiatrist's dream when you look at it. But the fact of the matter is, it's, it, it's a reality. So you've got to be smart in about everything you do. And what I've noticed in the last, I've experienced it in the last 20 years again, that the seat manufacturers have come to the table, probably it's a pun, but anyway, they've uh, really come on in leaps and bounds in trying to create uh, the, the privacy factor, certainly in the premium cabins. And also a lot of work has gone on in economy. Uh, which is a difficult thing to do with regard to privacy, but uh, well-being, the articulation of seats, the materials you use in seats, the structures of seats, the televisions, and then you iterate that with the food service that you're doing, the lighting, 
uh, cabin architecture and all that critical to recognise that we're all human beings. Some of us can afford more than others, but most of us can't afford more uh, than you know the the people in the in the forward cabin. So they are, e are equally important that you're doing the right thing for the economy budget passengers. I'm not talking at low cost or low frills. I'm talking about full service airlines that are trying to do the right thing by the passengers. Okay. Um, we sometimes have the feeling, or I do, that um, aviation is one big family. Do you think there are some sectors, some industries, where you should, we should focus on more when it comes to developing interiors? Question to all of you, maybe. I'm here for the first time. It looks like a family to me, but I don't know. I mean, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in every different airlines all the time, but I mean, they're all different businesses, right? So, but it's nice to hear that you're a little family. <laughs> You can also disagree, you are. I think <laughs> one challenge I think many airlines face that because of course we are developing the systems uh, continuously, so there's a lot of need for standardized, certain level of standardization as well. And because for the customer, you shouldn't, customer shouldn't see any difference what backend system we have behind the screen or behind different systems. And I think for an airline, it tries a lot of uh, cost and of course development time as well when we have to keep on changing a lot of the systems, backends when we want to develop things. So I think. The general wish for suppliers is that we need to also be able to standardize things so that we can faster bring products and features to the marketplace so that we can have better service to our customers. Yeah, again, I, I agree with that. I, I, uh, you know, shows like this um, bring innovation ideas to market. And you know, people like me have been in it an awful long time, still get shocked and stunned by some of the things I see here. And trying to bring the crossover and do the application as how that would work in cabin, in our case, uh, in this particular case is fantastic. So as long as people in this room and others coming behind continue to innovate, come up with ideas and do not become complacent or starve themselves of, of the criticality of innovation, bearing in mind that we've had a technological revolution which has transformed everything we've done, whether you're producing carpets, curtains, seats, whatever it may be, and that harnessing that, and I see a lot of people in this room, we look at lighting for instance, have advanced their capabilities in their product offering simply because they've, they've embraced technology. The more we do that, the more likely it is that when I rush off into the sunset, there'll be lots of ideas still coming down the line and still being great for the airline family and the community. So okay. good luck at all. Okay. Um, I think we have to come to an end as our finalists are getting impatient uh, with uh, who is the winner tonight. Uh, speaking for everybody, so Tim. Um, so last question maybe to the two gentlemen here uh, representing some very important airline customers. You have a full room here full of industry executives uh, who are also in many cases your suppliers. Um, do you have any particular wish or comment you would like to address before you leave the stage. Innovate, customize, but standardize at the same time. I don't know, it's a difficult to ask, but <laughs> we need actually all three of them. <laughs> yeah. Ideally at the same time. So Tim. All of that, but you know, give us a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony, I also have a question for you. We, we've just talked extensively about aircraft interiors, and I think it's been great because many of us are terrible aviation geeks. So uh, honest feedback from your end, you not only do Crystal Cabin Awards, but you also uh, frequent the catwalks of Milan or you frequent Hollywood. Does anybody outside the aviation industry really care about such things, such as aircraft products, or even ever talk about it? That's all it. we talk about. We always say, what do you fly? What do you fly? What? Oh, they're good. They have this. We always dream of someone who's going to finally have a masseuse on board. That's the one airline <laughs> we're going to fly. I'm going to only fly with Virgin. the airline back. We had. Do you? <laughs> Not anymore. They did. <laughs> but we were here. We should, obviously. <laughs> he's he's going to show you. He's going to show you. <laughs> Not pressure. Yeah. That's what we dream of. I dream of having my luggage arrive every time, which never happens to me. Not one airline is really manage that. I tend to lose my luggage at least once a month. So if you guys could manage that, that's my dream. Okay, that's your one dream to the... <laughs> okay, we also have some people from the airport, so you listen carefully. Um, yeah, thank you. That was a great answer. I feel a lot less geeky now. Um, 
thank you everyone for this wonderful panel. It was a pleasure having you here. Um, and um, yes, I think uh, let's look at the innovations for this year for the Crystal Cabinet. Thank you so much for coming and being on stage. Thank you. 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 Thank you.